Hello, DrupalCon Prague. My name is Matt Cheney. Thank you for sticking around to the very last session of the conference. I hope you guys had an amazing time. Did everyone have a good time, DrupalCon? Um, it's one of my favorite times of year, and it's uh, super fun to be in this awesome big room. So hopefully, uh, we'll bring the energy to fill the place. So as I said, my name's Matt Cheney. I work at a company called Pantheon that provides a development platform and hosting services for Drupal. And part of my role there is to make sure that Drupal distributions rock. That I believe very strongly that Drupal will run 10, 20% of the internet. And I think the way we get there is by having prepackaged starting states and out of the box solutions for common things that people want to have for websites. Um, I write a lot of code day to day. I care a lot about making sure that that code is good and that the people who use it is good. I know a lot of you are in the same boat. But part of what I'm trying to do with Panoply and what I think Drupal should do as a platform is to focus on the site builder. That these are the people that make most of the websites in the world today, probably most of the websites in Drupal. They're not implementing complicated hook systems. They're not writing a lot of custom code, but they're making websites that push their ideas out there to the world. And this is really important to me. I didn't go to school to be a programmer. I went to school to be a librarian. My interest is in organizing information, having people tell their stories online. And that's why when I look at tools like Panels Module, for which I love, this is a tool that with a little bit of cleanup, I thought, really could be the kind of thing you could hand over to people who aren't technical coders or don't want to write code, but still want to control their layout to like edit rich text content, to provide a lot of plug and play functionality so that they can go from having not a website to having a full website that they can show off to their friends and family, followers and everyone that cares about it. Um, and this, this talk, as you might imagine, is about Panoply. It's a base distribution of Drupal. It includes a bunch of different modules and a bunch of different features. I'll talk about most of them in the next hour or so. And we'll do a pretty good live demo, which we can all cross our fingers. Uh, it works the way it should. Um, but I think just sort of to back up, uh, the first session of the conference I went to was um, the Drupal 8 site building, site building uh, a session by Swentel, which I thought was excellent. Um, all the stuff I'm going to show you is in Drupal 7 today, so I was really excited to see some of the site building tools for Drupal 8. It's got a lot of improvements for adding new fields uh, into core. It's got an ability to have plugins and fieldable blocks in core. It has a WYSIWYG. It has content administration improvements. And this is the kind of stuff I think when Drupal 8 comes out will make Drupal 8 a really awesome platform for people who are site builders to build stuff. And if that's stuff that excites you, if that's stuff you saw and be like, man, that would be awesome to have today, Panoply is very much that solution. Panoply is for the site builders and for the folks who want to make distributions. Because out of the box, Panoply does a lot of stuff. And that's really important. Because most people don't want this thing when they talk about wanting a website. This is, as you might uh, guess, Drupal out of the box. This isn't something that looks like a website I would launch. This isn't something that makes it clear what I need to really do to like, do anything other than maybe add a piece of content to that front page. And it's not the kind of thing that I can use on my own. I need a lot of other contributed modules. I need a lot of other custom configuration in some very dense administration pages. And I really have to work. I have to work to make this thing a website. And that's a problem. That's why like, less than 1% of all the Drupal downloads actually turn into websites. These aren't people who like, downloaded Drupal because they didn't want a website. It's because they downloaded them and they had problems installing it, or they got it, they couldn't configure it, or any number of other things. And that's why solutions like Joomla and WordPress have way more installs than Drupal does, because those are honestly easier products to use for people who aren't professional developers who aren't going to start down to write code to make every website. And that's why I've been really excited over the past few years that we're actually seeing things that look a lot more like websites coming out of the sort of Drupal distribution space. So this is something that looks a lot more like the kind of thing if I like, want to download an open source product to actually go out and have a website that I might want. This is, this is open public from uh, phase two. They do a lot of government sites. They packaged up sort of a, a government site into a box. And they have this thing. You can download it on Drupal or you can check it out. And if you're making a like, public government site, this is what you want to start with. This is way closer to what I'm going to end up with if I'm making such a site than this sort of like blue uh, kind, of, uh, kind of madness right here. And that's true for things that are like, you know, hey, I want a government site like this. 
It's also true for common functionality I need. This is Commerce Kickstart, one of the best distributions in Drupal. It gives you e-commerce power right out of the box. Like having done a lot of configuration in Uber Cart and Drupal Commerce, this is not necessarily like the kind of thing that always will be super intuitive to someone who doesn't build websites. That's why having things like Commerce Kickstart that give you that store and that catalog and that ch cart and checkout experience right out of the box is way powerful. Because if you're sort of sitting there as someone new to Drupal and you're at this screen and it's like, okay, I have this, how do I turn it into a store? You go to a, you know, ooh, look, check on Drupal, 23,000 modules, I guess one will do it. That's way too much work and it's way too much work for new people. And that's, that's what I care a great deal about in Drupal um, and beyond, people learning and improving their skills and using this technology we all work so hard to make great and actually turn that into a thing. So that's why I like things like Open Public. That's why I like things like Commerce Kickstart. And that's why I like working with people who want to build solutions for their, their people. This is a, a website from the University of California at Berkeley in the United States. This is someone, they, universities have a lot of websites they need to build. They have a common set of design elements, this uh, gold and blue are Berkeley's school colors. And they want to be able to say, hey, we need this site. Here's an easy way to get going. You can spin up a site very quickly. You can have all this functionality to the box. And it looks like it should look. It has the functionality it should be. And that's where to get going. And this is how we increase the numbers of people using Drupal sites. This is how we attract more new people. And this is how we like legitimately have you know, better solutions in Drupal. Because like I've been saying, like users want something really great out of the box. They want to be able to start from the absolute highest level that they can. They don't want to redo plumbing every time. They don't want to have to do a lot of the repetitive work. They want to start and start raking their content and working on their design. Because that functionally is what people are expecting to do with tools like Drupal and open source tools. And that's sort of what I think we can get to as a community. And that's what Panoply and, and distributions, I think, do. Because, you know, this will help you for a single site because people want really great stuff out of the box for, for a single site. But they also want to get clone the box and have lots of different uh, sites that sort of work and function the same. Um, one of the things I see a lot of my job at Pantheon is that we're, uh, we host you know, tens of thousands of Drupal sites for a lot of different people. Many sites are just one developer or one organization. They have their site they're working on. But we're increasingly seeing a lot of organizations and universities and companies, they don't want just one thing, they want a hundred of them because they need to have various web properties to address all the different educational or business or organizational needs. And that's why having a distribution to Drupal that you can just sort of click and it spins up something great really helps people sort of, uh, sort of make that all happen. And that's something that I think is, is very much what Panoply is trying to empower and what I think presumably a lot of you in the room either want to do or have done. Because lots of people, lots of people are doing this. You've got, you know, like a lot of universities that have their own distributions out of the box. So any one university can have that university's website. You know, I've got governments like the Canadian government. They have a, 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 a version of Drupal that they can spin up and has a lot of their multilingual and like various other kinds of features. You've got you know, media organizations that have their sites. And you have a lot of Drupal companies and other kinds of organizations that are making solutions in this space. And we're seeing more and more of them every year. We're seeing stronger and stronger business models for them every year. And we're seeing Drupal distributions end up you know, taking a serious amount of, of interest and in being a, a substantive part of the Drupal ecosystem. And I think that's really good because um, we've got about a million Drupal sites in this world, um, and that's very cool. But Drupal, I think, is destined for like really bigger things. And I think what's much cooler than a million Drupal sites would be obviously a uh, Justin Timberlake approved billion Drupal sites where we have everyone in the world who doesn't have to struggle writing custom code, who doesn't have to worry about having bad tech, who can have a really awesome Drupal experience but make it easy that Drupal should be as easy to like, to like deploy and to configure as it is to get a Facebook account. Facebook has a billion, you know, billion users. Drupal could absolutely get to that point because everybody needs to, you know, more and more people need to get online. And I think it's sort of part of Drupal's destiny to run double digit percentage of the internet. I think distributions get us there. Here's the problem. It's, it's, it's hard to make a Drupal distribution. It's hard to put a lot of this base functionality in play. That this is one of the problems that I had worked on. I've worked on a number of different distributions in the Drupal space. I'm doing a lot of reinvention. I'm creating a WYSIWYG from scratch a bunch of times. I'm doing a lot of different layouts over and over again. I did that when I was a you know, site developer. I do that working with distributions. There's a lot of repetition. And I think one of the things that open source software and Drupal is, is, is really good at usually is bundling that kind of stuff up and saying, here's a solution. We can sort of do it once and then everyone can use it. 
And I think that that works really well on a granular level. Like, you can have a module that does something and that can be reused. I think it's way harder to do it when you talk about higher level features. Things like WYSIWYG out of the box, things like common layouts, things like, um, you know, any kind of sort of functional piece you want to sort of add. And this is where I think, um, you know, Panoply really comes into, into sort of play because Panoply is designed very explicitly as a base distribution. And it works, it works something like this. Like, we've got Drupal 7 core on the bottom. Obviously, we're using that to power all the magic that goes up. We've got a set of contributed modules that are used, things that I'll sort of share with you, some of which you'll recognize, some of which maybe not. Um, and those are sort of the glue that sort of keeps it all together. But what we have sort of above that are a set of like these common Panoply features, which I'll share with you and, and demo with you to show you sort of what this does. But that these are things that live on top of Contrib. These are things like a fully, fully loaded WYSIWYG, a set of layouts, a better admin experience, a bunch of little content widgets to add, a, add images or maps or table data or whatever to your site. And that it's the kind of thing that like really sort of is Drupal plus plus in the sense because you've got the Contrib and you've got, you've got these extra features. What's also super important, of course, is that the Legos keep going, that you can throw additional stuff on top, that you can take Panoply and you can extend it out there. There's about a dozen distributions that I'm aware of that are sort of serious using Panoply to do just this, um, including Open Atrium uh, 2, the Drupal 7 version. It's got Panoply sort of as, as its foundation, and it's going off and building all the really great um, Atrium features that it has on top. And that's great for them, for uh, phase two out of DC, because they can take the kind of stuff that's already done in Panoply, WYSIWYGs and layouts and admin experience and the rest, and say, okay, this is great. Let's contribute to this. Let's help, help fix bugs. Let's help add small features. But let's have our expertise in Drupal distributions happen at the top of the stack. And I think for folks in the room who've come sort of wanting to build their own distribution, I, I'm definitely going to run through how to use something like Panoply as a base distribution. How do you get it in a Drush make file, for example, and have it built? But I would say that if you're going to start a new distribution from scratch, just don't do that, or at least try, try an approach I'll outline today by starting with the Panoply framework and then moving up from there, because it'll save you a ton of time and energy in terms of getting everything, everything up to play. So you want to try this out? Um, I'll show you this, I'll demo it. I encourage you to go back and, and check it out. It's a project on drupal.org, uh, drupal.org slash project panoply. Um, you can download it. It's a, a fully built version of Drupal. You can just pull the tarball and install it on your web server, get, um, get your, put it in a version control, set up a, a dev, dev test live environment, get Redis and Varnish set up, do the APC and MySQL tuning, and get everything sort of ready to, to check it out. Um, that's pretty straightforward. You can also try, this is my, my company, uh, Panopoly, or, uh, Pantheon. You can go to this URL, get pantheon.com slash Panopoly, and we'll spin it up in, in the Pantheon cloud if you just want to check it out, which is also a really straightforward way, way to try it. Um, if you have it, feel free to bust out a laptop or even an iPad. It, it works reasonably well on that. And, uh, and follow along. So here's the deal. Panoply is a bunch of stuff, uh, but the first thing it is, is it's, it's a way to sort of enable and coordinate a bunch of contributed modules that don't always play very nicely together. Um, these are some of the modules that are bundled with Panoply. As I said, some of these are obviously going to be recognizable. Views is, is pretty common for sure. But you've got other stuff in there, like FAPE, that's a little bit like you know crazier, or some of these admin UI modules, admin views, or save draft, or link it, that maybe you're not familiar with. And these are things that all sort of, I've looked at all of this code, I've like tested and integrated these modules together, I've worked a lot of patches into these modules to make this kind of stuff jive together, and really specifically work with panels and the panels framework. But that sort of Panoply, when you turn it on, it already has this code running in the right versions with any appropriate patches, and it's sort of all coordinated. And that's something from a distribution perspective that's really helpful, because you know and you can assume that you have things like the date module or the link module already there. So if you're building on top, you don't have to go include that too. And that's something that Drupal 8 is going to make a lot easier for all of us, because a lot of these modules are going to be or are already in Drupal 8, and that'll just make it a lot less like, you know, contrib to, to, to put together. But that for now in D7, this is a really good solution to get a lot of this stuff there. Obviously, central to Panoply is Panels. Panels is, as I said, a brilliant module, but has a, a, like, a ton of like, administration sort of uh, complexity. It, it, it's sort of a developer tool UI that like, isn't necessarily the friendliest to end users. And one of the things that I've tried very hard to do with Panels is to take the sort of best sort of framework part of it 
and then put a sort of end user kind of like front end on it. So I'll show you this in the demo, but that, you know, it's sort of trying to make the panel stuff really work for end users. And it's not just panels specifically, there's also panelizer and fieldable panel panes and page manager existing pages and other modules in the sort of panels universe that all get bundled together. So if folks are like, use panels and really like it, uh, panelizer is a really great module to check out as well, fieldable panel panes as well. They all work together and they power most of the functionality that I'll show you today. Uh, Second thing that Panoply does really well and saves, I think, a lot of people a lot of time is to define common layouts, things that maybe as a you know, themer you're sort of building from scratch each time or modifying existing stuff, but you sort of have to, when you look at a comp or you have a sort of idea for a site, you have to build that layout in that way so people can check it out. Panoply sort of ships with 31. Uh, layouts out of the box, they're all uh, cross-browser, obviously, uh, then they all have responsive, responsive logic in them as well. And these are things that just when you turn on Panoply, you get, it's really easy to change between the layouts, and that as you build stuff on top of it, you can sort of assume all of these are there. And that's super nice, because Drupal, Drupal core and sort of the architecture in Drupal 7 doesn't really let you have these sort of like first-class layout plugins that exist and can be used. It sort of delegates that to the theme system. Um, Panoply sort of takes it back and says, no, we're going to like, sort of control the content region, which is most of the page. We're going to let you switch layouts, and we're going to let these always be available. So you can have any node use these layouts, any page use these layouts, and, and, and really sort of, sort of jive with it. And that's something that, like, you know, this isn't its own module, Panoply Layouts. Um, most of the stuff I'm showing you is sort of modulized and can be decoupled from the larger system. So if there's something you see here, like, oh, man, that WYSIWYG's awesome, I want to try that. Like, you can just use the Panoply WYSIWYG module, either in your distribution or even in your own sites that you're building, and you'll get that functionality. There's a, a lot of work that's been done to make sure you can sort of pick and choose the stuff you want. A lot of people will sort of pick up the layouts and, uh, and just roll with those. But there's 31 of these things. This covers, I think, about 85% of the use cases that like, I've seen as a sort of you know, site builder, sort of developer. Um, it's, you know, that may, your mileage may vary there. But it's definitely going to do a lot for people to get going. And that all of these layouts are relatively easy to replicate. They're all using sort of the, the sort of C-Tools panels layout magic. So if you see one of these that's close, it's pretty easy to copy it and modify it to what you want. But this hopefully covers a lot of what you're trying to do. You get that all out of the box, uh, very straightforward. Third feature is search. Um, Drupal search, as many of you are familiar with, is, is, is relatively basic. It's designed to sort of work on any framework, so it you know, sort of does lowest common denominator stuff, MySQL, full text, index search kind of thing. It doesn't have facets. It doesn't have a lot of customization that's possible out of the box. And that's, just li that's limiting for people who want to have really interesting search sites. Um, as I said, I went to library school. I care a great deal about organizing and searching information. And so when I see stuff like Search API, which, which uh, Panoply bundles and I think is a great module, you have the ability to do much, much cooler search interfaces. And so Panoply sort of gives you that default one right here. And this is just a basic sort of version of this. We see you know, the, list of, um, the list of results. That's a view you can customize and a panel pane you can customize. And you've got a facet on the right. And you can obviously go however you want with facets, but that Panoply is sort of smart in that it supports, obviously, so Search API supports uh, sort of the normal database search. So if you just turn it on with your MySQL database, you'll get the faceting and you'll get that kind of, kind of stuff. It also has a sort of uh, Apache Solar um, Search API integration as well with some like conditional logic there. So if you, you know, spin it up on Pantheon, you get a Solar instance that automatically configures to it. If you have your own Solar instance, you can sort of configure that as well. And it'll just sort of work in Solar world. But if you lose Solar, it'll default back to the database. And that's sort of a smart logic just to get Search up and running. It's something if you've had to build a custom Search page can take some time because it's, you know, Search API, Search API, Solar, you know, Facet API, and then all that configuration. This just happens out of the box. It's Panoply Search, it's a feature, and it'll sort of work. And that's a really great thing that you can get uh, on your site if you're sort, of, you're sort of jamming on a Panoply. Fourth feature is probably the, the bestest of the features, um, at least in the Drupal 7 world, because we don't have a WYSIWYG and core. Setting up a WYSIWYG is sort of tricky to do. Um, it's not that crazy to get like a basic WYSIWYG started, you know, WYSIWYG API, JavaScript library, you know, apply it to some, to, to some uh, text formats, you're good to go, I guess. But that, to actually do a WYSIWYG really right requires a fair amount of work. So this, you know, this has a sort of special theme that's put in, so it looks a little better. 
It's got button configuration that was extensively user tested and refined, which basically just involved me copying WordPresses. Um, uh, it's got media integration with media modules, so you can like pop in and out images or videos really easily. It's got this caption filter magic, so you can actually upload images. It's got image resize filters, so you can resize them, and then you can you know have a lot of fun with all of that. Got tons of different cool markup and tags and attributes that get all passed through, but it's got WYSIWYG filter module to actually make sure that we sanitize that information so you're not sort of full texting everything and letting people do cross-site scripting attacks or other kinds of security considerations. The, um, the WYSIWYG itself sort of tries to you know, give you the kind of power you have but not give you too much power, and that's really helpful. It also has a sort of uh, backup option if you're not a WYSIWYG person that it'll have a sort of like markdown filter that you can sort of toggle between, and I'll demo that, demo that in the demo. But the idea here is that this is the kind of thing that's got five modules, a bunch of config, and takes four to eight hours to set up if you've done it before. And this is something you sort of just get out of the box with the Panoply without having to, having to really work for it, which is awesome. Um, that sort of sits with inside a larger sort of admin page looking, you know, closer to, to, to what the Drupal 8 admin experience will be, which is much improved. Looks a lot like the Word, WordPress admin experience. Um, nothing super revolutionary here, but like the positioning and prioritization is important. So the, the title field is twice as big as the other fields because titles are really important. The URL, which like Path Auto typically is going to hide in a field set at the bottom of some set of tabs, is prioritized because when I'm making a new page, I want to like, pick the URL right then and there. That's very important to a lot of folks. And that the actual options, things like you know, having it you know, be, uh, have menu items or authoring information are, are sort of offset to the right. So that everything on the left is your content, everything on the right are sort of options around your content. And um, that's the kind of thing that sort of as a site editor who's just an admin, I like, can benefit a lot from this kind of thing. And uh, this is even an older version. I'll show you in the demo. We've got this save as draft module that sort of prioritizes um, the sort of you know, save, save and publish buttons as opposed to having publish be just a little bit you check. And that's awesome just because this makes people's lives easier. And obviously, this is a panel page and is very editable. And that's very awesome for a lot of the folks who just want to sort of have an easy experience editing content. Other feature which Maybe, maybe one of my favorite features is the ability to create a sort of landing page. Um, Drupal obviously lets you create a page, uh, which is a content type, but that's nothing more than just a body field that you can sort of muck around with. Um, that's not, to me, a landing page. A landing page is something that has a sort of rich set of, of layouts that has a lot of options to add or remove stuff. And this is the kind of thing that Panels is really good at and has historically been very good at. Folks who are familiar with Panels probably use it for the front page. That's one of the most common, common options that pan, uh, people use for pan, uh, pan, uh, Panels. This sort of works all with inside of the, of the normal content creation workflow. So you'll see in the demo, you want to create a new piece of content. You can pick a content page, which is just normal WYSIWYG, or you can pick a landing page where you get this kind of interface. Give me a name, give me a path, add it to the menu if you want, and then have something that you can start to play around with and customize as a landing page. On the back end, it's making you a panels page, it's setting up that, you know, that callback, and it's doing the configuration, but it's not something that you have to worry about as an end user because the back end panels can be a little scary. This happens all on the front end, and um, it sort of just works. And what makes that even better is that the, this module for panels called Panels IPE, which sort of extends the panels functionality to sort of be on the front end, immediately gets to be able to be used to customize that landing page and any other page on the site. So this is, this is sort of the, if, you turn, if you've used Panoply before, this should be pretty familiar. Every page has this sort of like black bar at the bottom where you can customize the content or change the layout. This is something that really makes like, like content editors and site builders' lives way easier because you have this visual connection between the stuff you're modifying and you have the stuff that, um, that's on the page. It has the styles that you have. It doesn't have to abstract it. Because Drupal, Drupal, I think, having worked with Drupal for about eight years, the, the, the piece that really is very frustrating to me is that Drupal, like, you'll, you'll sort of fiddle something over here on an admin set screen or in code, and then something else will pop up over here that does something. And if you know how that works, you think you're freaking doing magic all the time, because you're like, do 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 and then it like, does it. But for people who like, don't know that pattern, it gets super confusing, because they're like touching stuff here, and it's changing here, and they don't really understand. And having that kind of immediate 
customize this page, move stuff where I want for this page, save for this page is super good as a workflow because they don't have to like lose context that way. They don't have to have a magic twig tickle here and pop up here kind of experience. And that's the panels, panels IPE module that sort of brings panels to the front end. So if you haven't seen this before, but you've seen panels and you're like, wow, that's crazy. This is way easier, way better. And um, uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll impress you or convince you to try it. Within inside of that, um, panels also makes it, or Panoply makes it easy to add content to all these different pages. So when you sort of customize your page, you get a lot of blue areas for your regions, you can add new stuff to it. This is uh, using the fieldable panel panes module. So if you want to, say, add an image to a sidebar region, um, doing that in Drupal like core without sort of some of this extra stuff is actually sort of tricky. You know, if you want to add an image to the sidebar, you have to figure out how to get the image onto the site. You then have to reference that image um, using some sort of like HTML logic, which you'd have to write, or you'd have to like use some other modules, sort of, you know, sort of put that image in the sidebar. Then you have to use the block UI to sort of get there, which you know it has its own sort of set of complexities. Panoply stuff makes it real easy. See a region, hit add, pop up the screen of the different things you want to add to your site, pick the one you want, upload your image, and go. Um, has some nice responsive properties on the CSS on that image, has the ability to drag it around to different areas. This is super cool because this is, when I'm thinking conceptually about like building websites, like I'm thinking about here's this Blake canvas, I want to add this thing here and that thing here, and those things aren't like, you know, block callbacks with a markup, those are images and, and text and, and maps and, and videos and, and the like. So this is something that, that really makes folks, folks' lives easier on top of having this customization sort of possibility. So a lot of the stuff in Panoply, once you've added it or while you're adding it, you get these sort of customization screens where this is a view, uh, a view in question. And you actually, it's a, a little washed out, but you can sort of see there's some options here around like sort order and like number of items and which fields to show and some you know, titles and, and stuff like that. And that you have sort of this preview on one side, the options on the other side, and you're able to sort of pick the thing you want, hit save, and then it's there. And this is something that I think makes sort of the experience for folks who are a little scared to sort of click buttons and hope it works to sort of give them a lot of confidence. And that, you know, in general, sort of bringing it back to the distribution world, that Panoply provides you sort of vis-a-vis -vis Chaos Tools plugin system, honestly, but sort of in general, it gives you this sort of golden path, this like, road to how to make sort of your distribution or how to make your site. That when I'll sit down and sort of make a, make, make a small website, maybe for a friend or something, and I'll use, use a Panoply sort of base, my thinking when I do have to go into code is not about how do I custom magic this, but it's like which style plugins do I need from, to add to make the design be able to be flexible? What layouts do I need to add? What kind of content like plugins do I need to add to sort of put this all together? And that sort of the mental map of how you build sites changes from a lot of sort of custom logic to sort of this very formalized sort of plug-in system within Chaos Tools. And that's great in the Drupal 7 world. We have that. It maps not like immediately, but it's conceptually sort of similar to how Drupal 8 will do its plug-in system. And that's super awesome because that standardizes the approach and it also forces some reusability and some best practices. So a lot of the stuff on the, the Panoply sort of docs and Drupal.org, which I definitely uh, invite folks to check out. There's a lot of explanation on how to build Panoply apps, how to use some of this Chaos Tools stuff, on top of a, a large corpus of stuff on panels of Chaos Tools in general. Um, and that becomes, that becomes awesome, because with sort of the Panoply bit and a little bit of your own sort of thinking of what you want, you can go from having sort of not a website to having a really awesome website in just a few hours, and that's, that's sort of cool. Um, I've actually done this sort of a Panoply talk at some Drupal camps, and, and I, I have slides which I'm showing you now, which I think is helpful to sort of get the overview. But I did one in Drupal camp Sacramento in California, the US, where I was just like, well, yeah, you know, I guess I could sort of show it off, but I've seen some of you before, you've seen my larger talk. I'm just gonna rebuild the camp website in like that, that in that like 50 minutes I had. And I just sort of said, okay, here's a schedule page with a landing page, I made a table view, here's image gallery for people, here's a front page. And it more or less worked, which was sort of cool. And that's where I think like that power plus some of the extra stuff you have really lets people make stuff fast and that makes things go live and that makes everybody really happy, so. Okay, so that's sort of like the things it does. Um, so you wanna use this yourself. Well, like I said, download from drupal.org, try on Pantheon, you can use it for make a site. You wanna make a distribution for making many sites. Well, pretty straightforward. 
Um, first step is that you need to sort of have, uh, you know, start your, your distribution. On Drupal Org, we have a Panoply based distribution starter kit. It's like, you know, not very much code. It's basically a light info file, a light make file, and a light profile. Basically, it just says include the like nine modules Panoply has, and then some logic to include their dependencies. And that that'll sort of turn on, you know, Panoply in your own sort of namespace, you know, my distro in this case. And that so you work for a university, you want your own distribution, you sort of name it your university name or whatever, dot info, dot make, dot profile, and, and you get going. And that will give you all the Panoply stuff. And then you sort of just want to add a couple custom things. So maybe you have your own theme that you're bundling, put that in the make file, add a couple bits of logic to enable the theme and, and, and make it the default, and suddenly you can go from having that sort of wonderful blue bar tick to having you know, your own university branding. A lot of folks already have themes that they're reusing, turning it on in, in an install profile is pretty easy, and that, um, that's something that, that sort of makes your sort of custom distribution rock, because now you've got the same Panoply content. Of, I'm a vegetarian, so I use a lot of vegetable stuff. So you have all these vegetables and like veggie lipsum, but it's sort of your thing. You also then can add additional modules, either things that are custom for, for your case, or you can add other Drupal modules that you think are there. So in this case, university is adding a, a sort of feeds, uh, a feeds module to pull in some sort of data feeds from the university wide and uh, enabling their sort of single sign-on CAS module, just so when folks spin up the, the distribution, they have single sign-on enable, which is awesome. But that, like, once you sort of do that, you take the starter kit, you maybe enable your custom theme, you add a custom module, then you just drush, drush make the thing, and um, now you've got yourself uh, a distribution. And that, like, it, you know, drush make is magic, and it'll sort of dependency build all the different stuff, and you're sort of off to the races. Drush Make is also great for folks who have used it or want to check it out in that you have, because it sort of has this recursive property where it will look for the Panoply stuff and then look for the stuff it depends on and sort of put that all together, that you have a lot of granular control over stuff. So if a new update comes out for a module, Panoply will update eventually with that module, but you can sort of update it ahead of the schedule or you can add a patch that you specifically need for your use case, or you could even remove stuff that you don't want, and that gives you a lot of sort of control for your own distribution. So I would say, instead of trying to like dive into the distribution space head first and say, I'm just gonna start from a blank canvas and just figure it all out, starting from something like this helps you out a lot, and I think that's sort of the point of open source, and that's sort of the point, point of Drupal. And so, so that's sort of generally what's, what's going on. So let's check this, let's check this thing out and, uh, and sort of show you this. Um, it's a live demo, so that uh, has its own considerations. Um, oh, um, I sort of need to see that to do that. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I've got to put this in mirror mode because I haven't quite scripted the whole actions. Okay, so I've installed Panoply in this case on my local machine, which you'll see in just a hot second. And it's nothing, it's just the only thing I've done I've done here is I've turned on the, the there's like a demo, um, let's see if that looks right, a demo module. And that's something that can sort of uh, have, have expose your functionality. Uses uh, the default content module, which is, which is nice, although maybe not best. Okay. Bing. Enter full screen. Okay. So, uh, bing. I can see it, Joe's can see it. Um, I would envision a blue screen with some vegetable pictures and a title that says DrupalCon Prague with this awesome Panoply like logo that I made that has the various building blocks, just like that, magic. Um, okay, so this is Panoply installed out of the box. I didn't do anything here other than turn it on. I did turn on all the extra modules, that's really awesome. Um, and so let me walk you through these features and try to impress you with sort of the kind of functionality here. So first thing you'll notice, as sort of promised, on this page and most of the other pages, at the very bottom, we've got these two options for customize this page and change this layout. These are things that I think sort of reflect the kinds of needs that a lot of folks would have. So you'll see here, we've got a pretty standard layout, sidebar and main area. If I go ahead and change, it'll actually bring up a modal that gives me sort of the options for the various layouts I have. As I said, there's 31 of them. They're all right there. And you can sort of see, um, it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little light, but this, this one has a sort of background 
um, to it that sort of indicates that's the active layout. Well, so that's a cool layout, but maybe I want to see what it would look like sort of the other way. So it's just a simple matter of sort of picking that, that version, making sure it works, and it sort of flips it around on the page for me. And that allows me to sort of check it out and be like, oh, yeah, well, how does that look for my site? OK, maybe that works. Maybe I want to have it be you know, a little, uh, little narrower, and it'll, it'll sort of go down that way. And this is the kind of stuff where like, changing layouts for individual pages like by default is sort of tricky to do in Drupal. This provides that ability sort of just in the UI. I haven't gone to the admin par part of Drupal site, uh, and I probably won't unless I show off some of the, the sort of nifty back end things, but that almost everything that Panoply does, does on the front end, it does for end users, and that's sort of the point. So change the layout, that was sort of cool. Customize this page is also quite nice. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna say, okay, Within the layout, you've got a set of regions. In this case, we've got a sidebar region, and we have sort of this main content region. And what it lets you do is it lets you sort of say, oh, well, uh, within those regions, I can drag stuff around or move them between areas. You know, maybe I, I want my search right there, and I can go ahead and save it. And that allows for a reorganization. And this is something that, like, just if I'm sort of looking at a site, maybe with a client or just talking about it, you know, to myself and thinking, oh, what would be really great? Having the ability to sort of like move stuff around in real time and sort of see, you know, oh, well, how does that work can be, can be really awesome. Because, you know, you, you have these sort of needs and sort of experiences when you're thinking about the site, but if you've got to go back into the block visibility settings and like drag a bunch of things around and, and chase, change some like regions and logic, it, it can actually cause, you know, cause, cause you to have, have a headache. But um, that's, this is something that makes it easy. It's pretty easy to get rid of stuff. If you don't like that, you just go ahead and, and, and poof, there it's, there it's gone. Um, you still have it in your library of things you can add, so it's not totally gone, but it's, uh, it's sort of available to, to be removed there. You also get the option, as sort of promised, to configure this thing. So this is a small list of items. If I hit, if I hit customize, it'll bring up that screen I showed you earlier. And as I said, this is a, views, uh, a, a view uh, display. Views and Panels actually has some sort of nice integration between the two. They're both written by Earl Miles, Merlin of Chaos, and so there's a, there's a sort of click code path that connects the two together. This is something that um, sort of gets exposed here in the modals in a way that actually is pretty nice because I can you know, say, oh, well, I don't want to see images, but I do want to see teasers, and I don't care when the date is, and you know, maybe I only want two of them, um, and you know, I can pick the sort order or whatever. And that's something that I can sort of go ahead and save, and it sort of changed that fundamental display. And that becomes something that's super powerful, because people really like to have that kind of control and have those kind of needs. And this is just obviously the demo content. With your content, you can sort of configure and customize at will. Um, that's for a view that has a field view. Uh, you can do the same thing for, um, this is uh, sort of a content, a content view, sort of node view, in this case, entity view. And you have here, these are actually the, um, the view modes that are set up. Um, view modes are really great as a sort of form of Drupal site building and Drupal development. Obviously, normal Drupal comes with default and, and, and teaser. Um, Panoply adds this feature one that sort of has a little bit of coolness. But you can sort of see um, this will turn it into a standard teaser mode. And it'll actually go off, and it'll sort of turn the content here into, in, into the teaser. Or you could do the full content if you want. And that's sort of nice because now you have the ability to sort of configure and make your view modes as awesome as you want. And you can use tools like Display Suite to really make this stuff shine. You can then turn around with Panoply and configure them. You also get the ability to sort of with inside of uh, the individual things, maybe instead of having you know, that, you could even want to have a, a table view. And so you could go ahead and um, you know, structure your content like this. So maybe you don't want the, the teaser but you do want the authorship and the date or something like that. And you can, you can sort of put your data like that. And this is not doing nothing more than just switching on the view, the display mode, so it has table views, which, which views does, but that you can sort of do that all without having to sort of learn the airline pilot dashboard views interface, although that's gotten a lot better recently. But it, it's the kind of thing where if I don't, if I haven't used it before, I like probably will break it. And this allows you to sort of have guardrails around what you're doing to sort of get it, get it right the way you want, which is sort of nice. Um, and that'll work. You can customize more or less any piece of content. You can also just in the, this is, this is a sort of landing page also, the home page, as you might imagine. 
uh, for individual node pages or user pages or taxonomy pages, honestly, any entity, um, Panelizer is a module that I mentioned earlier. Panelizer basically takes the kind of stuff that used to only work uh, for like a home page and allows you to do it to any arbitrary entity. So this is a node page and you can customize a node page the same way. But you can see these are actually individual fields here and this is a menu block just doing the menu. But using the FAPE module, F-A-P-E, you can actually give a, like, a preview of just that field and you can adjust all your field settings, settings right here or even change the content itself within the field. And that's the kind of thing that like, you know, if instead of going to sort of the back end to do this stuff, that you sort of get it on the front end. Um, this works similarly to sort of like an inline editing kind of, kind of feature that Drupal 8 will have, but this allows for a little more administration helper around the edges, because you can you know, add a bunch more help text and you can have a bunch of options uh, that sort of can pop up and using the same kind of interface preview options up here and various other things. And that's sort of cool. Um, you also have the option typically to either save it so that just that particular entity has a new version, like edit this thing, save this thing, but there's an advanced option that'll actually allows you to save that for all of it and it will actually create a template, which is pretty cool. Um, so that customization is really helpful. That's the kind of thing you can turn over to an end user and they can actually go change everything on the site. You also get the option with inside of the individual sort of panes or uh, content panes to change the, the design uh, to them. Um, as I said, a lot of universities like this kind of stuff because they have sort of standardized color palettes. Drupal itself has a color palette for drupal.org and part of the demo, demo sort of module that you installed actually has a set of style settings that map that color palette. So if you want the dark Drupal blue, you can sort of just pick a, a style plugin to apply. This is a C tool style plugin. It's pretty straightforward. Um, what I'm doing here, I'm just injecting a class name. But the idea here is that I can do this for, for all sorts of different stuff. And this is, can work for various CSS modifications. I can also inject JavaScript. I can have additional customizations. And the idea is that I can sort of make individual end users have the ability within limits to provide design decisions for the site. And this is the kind of thing that'll allow sort of each site to be its own sort of unique snowflake, but without having um, to, to sort of worry about, um, about, about having to like go into CSS to make these changes. I can sort of do it right there and I can preview it. I also, which you might have seen, you, you have this option here where maybe you want tries blue, and you can sort of look at it and sort of see inside of the CSS that it would look like what it likes. If you don't like it, you can obviously cancel it and it'll go back to green. And that's the kind of sort of like preview before you, you, you go live kind of functionality that very lightweight uh, solution, but it's something that I think helps people just get a little more confidence because that, you know, if you break your site, that's bad. This helps to provide some guardrails. So that's how the sort of the home page works. That's how it works for, for user pages, taxonomy pages, node pages, et cetera. Um, if you want to go ahead and add a new one of these things, one of the, the cool features is when you add content, you get um, these sort of two options here. Uh, option number one is landing page. That's, or option number one is content page, which I'll show in a minute. Option two is landing page, and that provides that functionality I showed before. So we can go ahead and add, we'll add a page called Prague, user uh, uh, path at Prague, and make it on the top level. So I'll hit go. And this uses the, like, uh, see, you know, the wizard to create the pages. It's going on the back end to like, make, get, make Page Manager know about this. It's throwing it in the menu, and you know, lo and behold, I have a page called Prague. Well, that's not awesome, but you know, I hit customize and I can see I've got this one region for content I can start to add stuff to. So we'll go ahead and add things. And this is the add interface if you want to add new stuff. Um, any of the sort of existing content you have, so in this case we've got our demo items, you sort of see up there and you get a preview of what it looks like, which is really nice, and you get the ability to sort of pick those and then customize them. Or, as, as mentioned, you have the ability to create a bunch of different kinds of things. So let's start with an image. I'll go ahead and add an image. I, I downloaded a couple uh, for, from uh, the Prague world. And I can go ahead and add, add this picture of Prague, which is sort of nice. This is the kind of thing that maybe if you had to do this on your own, um, without these kind of helpers, could be a little tricky. This sort of just works. Now I have an image. This could be a total page on its own. But I want to add more stuff here. So I'll go ahead and change the layout. Maybe I'll, I'll sort of 50-50 it. And now it's smart. It'll actually pull the, pull the image down just in CSS, but it will, it'll sort of provide a little bit of, um, of sort of logic here. So when I go to customize the page again, you can see I've got 
um, I've got sort of an extra area there. So maybe here I want to add some text, go to my favorite Lipsum site, Veggie Ipsum, grab some text starting with avocado, and go ahead and hit save. And now I start to have some text. And this kind of stuff is very cool because I can, you know, pick a lot of different things. Um, oh, sorry. Um, this is, uh, uh, I don't know any addresses in Prague, but I do know my address in um, San Francisco, California. And I can go ahead and, and sort of, ooh, um, I can go ahead and add a, a quick map here. And if you're doing something like, you know, trying to show people, hey, here's where, 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 where you are or what's going on, um, it, uh, it sort of provides a nice, a nice kind of experience here. Maybe that, uh, that map I want to make centered, so I can go ahead and, and sort of pick a layout that maybe has a, uh, a sort of center well, something like, something like this, and um, go like that. And then I'll maybe put this, put the, the, te the text up here. Oh, ooh, text the text, the text um, over, over here and do that, which is sort of nice. Um, I also have the option for things like maybe this image. I could go back and change it, or maybe this is the kind of thing I want to reuse a bunch. So I could go ahead and make it reusable, and I can call it Prague um, Castle. And I'll go ahead and save that. And I just made that reusable, which means if I go back to the home page and I'm sort of wanting to keep that piece of content, I can go ahead and hit customize and hit add, and I actually start to build a library of stuff that I want. So I'll go ahead and just add that, add that again to the site. And this is the kind of thing that like, as a content experience like, person or as a sort of end user that I have the ability to sort of drop in and out pieces of content and I have the ability to sort of reuse them and that becomes really nice. Because that'll work for images that are common to the site. That also will work for things um, like I can, there, you have an option to, to sort of add um, links to your site. So this is nothing more than just the link module with like a multiple fielded link that you can start to add. But you have a lot of ability here to um, you know, sort of say, hey, maybe I have a list of quick links on the site that sort of always, always show up because I, I really want folks to go, go to drupal.org um, and maybe I want them to go to the Panoply, Panoply page as well um, with the URL. And I can start to actually then maybe even save that as quick links. Yeah, links. And you know, this starts to build a page that like isn't unlike the kind of thing that I would actually want to have on the internet representing this content. And that becomes the kind of stuff that end users are asking for and clamoring for. Stuff that Drupal 8 will help them a lot to do, but Drupal 7 really makes it difficult for them. And that's true for the landing pages that I showed. That's also true for individual content pages. So just having a sort of body of the field. I've worked with plenty of folks sort of as, as part of, of work that I've done where I'm trying to help them make a page and style it a certain way. And even turning on a WYSIWYG can be confusing for them if the markup doesn't work right or they want to do extra stuff. And that having to try to teach someone HTML on top of having to figure out what's on their site can be like way too much. This makes it really awesome. So awesome page. And I can go ahead and, and uh, put, maybe put some more more text in here. And that this is sort of the, the WYSIWYG interface. Nothing here from the basic line should be super crazy. You know, you can bold, italic, strike through, list, block quote, that kind of stuff, alignment, side of things. But you also get the ability to uh, drop in the, um, the media module, which, you know, is constantly improving and, and changing. Panoply tries to take some of the sort of stabler parts of the module and allow them to be used be used on the site. And so we can go ahead and just, we'll maybe insert a file here. Um, and there's the, the clock. I'll go ahead and upload this. This is gonna drop, drop this on the file system, but also store this sort of in a reusable, reusable way. And I can um, alt text and title text as I want. And I can go ahead and, and add a picture of the clock, which is cool, because now I have that in my WYSIWYG. But maybe what I wanna do is use this image resize filter to make it make it sort of smaller, and then maybe I want to throw a caption on it, you know, best clock ever. And I can sort of get this kind of functionality floated to the right even um, set up. And that this is the kind of stuff that when I'm talking about WYSIWYG and I'm talking about end users or blogs or kind of things that people really need to have because this is it's just sort of straightforward. I write what I want and then I can either publish it so that it's like, you know, out there for everyone or I can save it as draft so that it's um, you know, able for me to play around with it, but um, isn't something 
that, uh, that you know, has, to, has to be public right now. And that kind of stuff is sort of built in. Um, you also have, there's this sort of kitchen sink plugin that uh, allows you to have even more options for the WYSIWYG that are hidden by default because some of these are a little more advanced or, or maybe not needed on a day-to-day -day basis. And Panoply Smart uses jQuery cookie to like actually store the preference. So if I'm a person that likes the, the full bar, I can get that all the time. If I'm a kind of person who doesn't, I don't, um, I, I don't have to see that. Also, as mentioned, um, obviously we're in WYSIWYG mode. There is an HTML mode as well. Um, the HTML mode is, uh, um, oh, that's got the caption filter on it. Let's Let's do that. Let's do a new page. Um, and it'll, it'll give you the sort of gobbledygook from the caption filter. But if I was to go ahead and, and add just a normal page, and I'll give us a little bit of markup here. Um, purple, the italics. And you know, I can switch. I can actually start to, start to see, see that logic right here um, in line. And so nothing crazy here. I mean, this is just like normal HTML. But the cool thing is that like, I have the market up editor, so I can actually sort of get you know, helper stuff, similar to how Drupal.org does it, where maybe I want to italicize that, it'll just give me, give me a little bit of help. But the idea here is that this provides both options for people, so that you have the ability to switch back and forth without having to confuse people, because some people like to write HTML, some people like WYSIWYG, let's just give everybody what they want, and this, this tries, tries to do this. Um, other stuff here, there's a lot of other things. Different modules do different stuff, obviously. There's um, uh, the content creation page, as you can see, you know, has, has the layout I mentioned. You've got some options on the back end, so you can actually configure which layout show up, which content pane show up, what reusable items show up, and you have the ability to edit all of those. Your sort of administration pages are all views using the great admins views module that allows you to sort of, because you know views is there, you can make your admin content pages views. That's something Drupal 8 will just do because it has views. Panoply can do that too. It allows you to have sort of your, this is my, my user page, and it allows my user page to actually be a, a panel, a, a panel, a customized panel page as well. And this is the kind of thing, if you've ever had to build like a dashboard or something like that for a client, you can actually just give everybody a user page, have it be something you can panelize up, and then you can go ahead and sort of configure it. But sort of, you know, meta level here is that like Panoply has a bunch of features, a bunch of stuff that people really like to do that like allow you to do things like make rich kind of pages like this. And it provides that all in a way that's reusable by other distributions and by other folks. So I've been working on this for about a year. There's you know, a dozen other people that like are seriously putting patches in and reviewing stuff and a lot of other people using this all around the world. And I would sort of say for folks in the room who want to sort of check this out, like definitely download the slides, check out the presentation again, specifically check out the docs on Drupal.org around the sort of starter kit and start to play around with this thing. Because you too can just sort of turn on your own theme and a couple of your modules and you can actually have this kind of functionality in your site. And that'll work for if you're doing a distribution, that'll work if you have to actually go out and build a new site. And you can even add the stuff to your old site. If you just wanted that WYSIWYG on your site, you can just go ahead and download it. But other than that, um, that's, sort of, uh, that's sort of the magic of the Panoply. There's a bunch more stuff that uh, is there you can sort of flush around with. But I definitely thank you all for your attention and sitting through the entire DrupalCon. And um, hope that everyone will stick around for the closing session. There should be a lot of energy. Uh, and have a great time in Prague. Thank you. <laughs>